I guess we start. Hey, uh, folks. Uh, no, go for it. It's hey, folks. It really doesn't need any introduction, but in case you weren't here yesterday, my name is Eamon Lee. I'm the corporate chef for Maine's. I'd like to personally thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come up here to the chef demo stage and share a little bit of knowledge with some of our culinary team. But I am very, 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 very fortunate to have a gentleman like Fabio Viviani up here to share with us some of his stories, talk about the product, talk about making gnocchi from scratch, why you would want to even consider making gnocchi from scratch in your restaurant, and everything else that he's learned. If you weren't here yesterday, you are in for a very, very special treat. I have nothing else to say about this. Fabio Viviani, grazie mille. I like the Italian accent, and so is scary, because when somebody speaks Italian, you never know if they understand it also, or they just know those five things and they just shoot it out randomly. You sound like you can't understand if I speak to you in Italian. See. Si. Si. <laughs> all right, all right. So, well, guys, it's been a pleasure. Do you guys have a soup spoon? Not a soup spoon. Something to scoop this out and uh, no, like a bigger something, whatever. Oh, you got it down here? Thanks, man. Beautiful. All right. So, um, I, I love, you know, this is a good event. This is a great event. I'm not the kind of guy that goes to event you wanna, you wanna turn it. You guys can hear over there, right? Very well. You now? What about now? Good now? That's better, cause at least there is not too much like, feedback. All right, perfect. See, I'm not the kind of guy that come to an event. The event it's an hour. I show up a minute prior. I leave a minute after. I hide in a room and trying to get out of here. I love talking to you guys. I love the interaction. I love I, I got out of voice. I didn't have any more voice. Um, thank you for all the picture we took. It was great. I had some really nice. Turn it up a little bit. I can't. It's fine. Fuck it. Turn it up. Yeah, that's fine. Who cares, right? Yeah. Um, I, I got. I enjoy it. Talking to you very much. I was talking to some folks for like an hour. It, it was great. It was really good. So thank you for a good time. So today, on the same principle. First of all, who was here yesterday? Raise your hand. Three people. First, can I ask you something? So, and this is not for me. I, I don't care. I'm not quite the police. But when somebody asks you to raise your hand, right? When I grew up as a kid, if I was cool, the teacher would tell me to raise my hand, and I was like, like this, like my arm is sore. She would have whacked me on top of my hand with a big stick, like an olive branch stick. When somebody tells you raise your hand, raise your hand, put it up. At least I can see you. You're down there, you go like this, what am I, like Superman with the X vision, go through three people to see your arm? Raise your hand. Who was here yesterday? Whoa, look how many. I haven't seen you guys before. Great, perfect. Who's the first timer here? Raise your hand. Good, perfect, half and half. So you raise your hand here yesterday. You raise your hand uh, if it's the first time. What about the 75 of you that didn't raise your hand in either of the options? What happened? To you? you were like just in a different place in time yesterday and today you got just teleported here? No. All right. I guess you guys are still sleeping. So let's wake up somebody. So here's what we're going to do today. Who like gnocchi? Oh, all of you. Of course you do. All right. First of all, we got to specified that the correct pronunciation listen who's talking priest called the cattle black uh i can't speak english but the correct pronunciation i believe it's a correct word pronunciation right for gnocchi is gnocchi it's not gnocchi it's not gnocchi it's not when in italy you have a g and you have an N, the sound is, I think, is that's fine. Yeah. I will probably break it before the end of the demo, but I don't know. When you have a G and you have an N, the sound is nye, nye. Like, you know when you don't like somebody and you're like, yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. I don't care for it. Yeah. Same things. Gnocchi. Yeah. Make sense? Sounds like negative, but it's actually the only correct way. I love when people go to the restaurant and they say to me, Fabio, we love your gnocchi. It, it makes me cringe, really. I just want to go like, 
You can't, you can't say that. It's gnocchi. It's not gnocchi. What is a gnocchi? It happened to me too going to restaurants and order stuff like a bruschetta and people go call it bruschetta. Or, you know, and I'm like, dude, it, it's, you know, I'm trying to learn English and I'm really trying hard to not butcher your language. So if you have five dishes that are really famous and they're meant to be said in Italian, call them for what it is, right? It's annoying. It really is. All right. So today we're going to do a lesson in gnocchi. America cuisine is based, most of the America cuisine technique are based on old French technique. You know, even the school system for hospitality is based in the kitchen on old school technique. Chef, sous chef, commis, saucier, garmanger. Those are all positions that came from the French teaching us how a kitchen brigade works. And one thing that one things that French people have mastered is the gnocchi recipe. The problem I have with that, two main things. As an Italian, I tend not to listen to French very much. But that's nothing to do with history. All I'm trying to do here, well, I mean, you got to understand them. They're good people, but wine, they lose. Sightseeing, the side, they got really, you're welcome. Renaissance, hello. So it makes it cars, you got Ferrari, Lamborghini, can't really compete with that. Soccer, shall we talk about soccer, friends? can't do it. All right, so we take it home. But they had a very good recipe for gnocchi. The only issue I have is that the French technique teaches us to make this particular preparation with hot potatoes. Hot potatoes, right? And hot potatoes to me, it's a, it's a hot potato. I don't want to deal with a hot potato. I don't like it. The principle behind gnocchi is fluffiness. The principle behind gnocchi is they got to be light. It's almost like all right? So if you have potato, hot potato has a lot of steam coming out. Steam translates in moisture. Moisture requires flour to be able to be worked with, right? And the more flour you add to the gnocchi, the harder they become when they cook. What happened? It's never good when this happened. You never want a man behind you just working on your... <laughs> That's all right. Is that a, what happened? So the frequency. It's probably my head is like all like kind of it creates a mass and interfere with electronics. It always works. My phone works from distance. When I put it on the table on speaker mode, I can be from here and they still hear me. I put it on my head and everybody goes like, what? What? Can't hear you. What? It's got to be something in my head. All right. All right. So, so do you understand the process, right? Hot potato, steam, steam, moisture, moisture, more flour, more flour, harder gnocchi. That's the problem I have. Gnocchi is going to be soft. If I have to chew it, What's the point? So here's what we do. We get the French technique that we have learned, cook the potato, rice them on the table, crack some yolk, put some flour, some cheese and salt, get these because you can't touch a hot potato, and you go like that, and you already have a mess on the table, right? Because it's a lot of stuff. You got to clean after yourself unless you have a, a really nice wife or a really nice husband, a housekeeper or an army of dishwasher. I grew up cleaning after myself, and I hate cleaning. I mean, I'm a clean person, but I don't like chores and stuff, all right? So we're going to take that technique, we're going to pack it nicely, and we're going to throw it away. No French technique today. Let's make this process easy, painless, and with a better result. First of all, you do not need an Italian guy telling you how to bake a potato, do you? Please. This is America. You guys invented baked potato. All right? So here's what you're going to do. 
you're going to get a potato, and you're going to bake it. How do you bake it? You stick the potato in the oven for how long? Say it again. An hour? Sure. Depends how big it is, right? Get a big potato. So you don't need 20. You just need a few big ones. Then when it's baked, you cut it in half, and now you have, guess what? Two half-baked potato. Then you got to get something like this. Something like this. Get a cooling rack. You know what a cooling rack is? It's, it's a net that goes over, has holes, and the normal people, they put cookies and cakes and, and loaf of bread to cool because there is holes in it. What I do, I get the two potatoes, flip them over, and smash them on it. So this is the result. Can you see that? Beautiful. This is the video fed. Is, it's all excited. Can you see these guys? Right? So this is the result. A coarse inside of a potato. Now, what are you going to do with the skin? You're going to get the skin. You're going to fry it back. You're going to put sour cream and cheddar cheese, and you're going to sell it to yourself for $9. What is wrong with you people? Seriously. People wonder, why you're so successful? Because America buy potato skin for $9. Why wouldn't I kill it? If in Italy you get the skin of a cooked potato and you fry that, you chop it up and you serve it to me with green onion, sour cream, and cheddar cheese, and then you charge me anything for it, and I'm at the table. I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I'm not going to say anything, but my grandfather will stab you in the neck with a fork. If I go to my grandfather today, and I'm going to be like, hey, grandpa, guess what? Ten bucks. He goes like, sure, huh? no problem, son. Here you go. How much? What is that for? Potato skin. My grandpa was like, huh? Yeah, grandpa, you got to give me $10 so I can buy a plate of potato skin in a restaurant. My grandpa's like, are you on crack? What is wrong with you? We give potato skin to chicken and pigs because we don't eat it. But thank you. I mean, it's, it's seriously, my food cost is amazing because my happy hour, I do truffle potato skin, $14.95. Sell by the bathtub. Seriously. I feel bad when my wife's this gnocchi in the house. She throw away the potato skin. I'm at 20 bucks. <laughs> I feel horrible about it. Only in America. You're welcome. But, that, but that's it. So now that you have the potato here, right? You have cooked, baked potato. Now what we do, you got to be patient. If you're in your restaurant, let it rest like this for a day or two in the fridge. They have to be very cold. If you do these at the house, at least overnight, they have to be cold. Then, French people, which by the way, I love French people. I'm taking my family to Paris next week. I love it. I just disagree on everything, but I love the actual good people. It would just make sense. Nothing wrong with them. So, just a vision diversity. Um, so what do you do? Don't attempt to make gnocchi with your hand. Seriously, people. You're not grandma, all right? We're going to have the same result in a third of the time. A third. In a tenth of the time. And there is no cleaning to do. Very little, all right? So here's what we do. First things first. You have cold potato. Then you have a mixer with paddle attachment. Now, if you're asking me... I don't know why it's called the paddle. Maybe for the shape, the outer shape, because there is holes in it. I mean, you can't paddle with this. Imagine you're in the middle of a lake. You try to paddle your way to shore with this. You're not going anywhere. You're just moving water. I mean, a goldfish will just pass you like that. It doesn't work as a paddle. But again, I'm not, didn't come up with it. So, all right, then what we do, you're going to get some nutmeg. Nutmeg is a spice, very earthy. It's a, it's a nut, it's a seed, really. You put it here, and you put a little bit of nut. You want to come on this side, buddy? Not behind me, on this side. You won't reach. Guess what? 
you shit out of luck because you're not going to stay behind me like that. All right, can you see here? Beauty. Nail are not part of the recipe. All right, get some, uh, get some nutmeg inside. I like nutmeg. It's very earthy flavor. Add nice, nice extra layers i love i love to build my food in layers right it's pointless to me to add the ingredients that you'll never taste i don't get those people that go like you know my grandma i don't even get her sometime she boil octopus and in a pot like this she put three leaf of mint and i'm like i love you grandma what <laughs> what is the, what is the point enhance the flavor i'm like no no it doesn't grandma it does it's like people that they can stand garlic, and in a pot of sauce like this, they put a clove of garlic. What? <laughs> Just for the sake you have it? It doesn't. That, that's, it's a, let's be honest about it. It doesn't do anything. So I always like to eat enough that you can taste it, all right? So we got that. Then we got a pinch of salt. Always pinch with three fingers. Never with two fingers, all right? Two fingers is weird. Just don't do anything. Like that, what is this? I do more than this if I do a tequila shot. And I don't do tequilas. Bad, bad, bad memories, all right? I mean, I, I did once, but it was a mess. Don't do it anymore. So always pinch with three fingers. Think about your loved one, right? Your kids, your wife, especially your wife. If you're pinching, if you're pinching, you're pinching with three fingers because two fingers doesn't do anything. Give her a good pinch, all right? What you laughing at, sir? Sir, what you laughing at? What are you talking about? You never pinched anybody. Never. Uh, I don't believe you, man. Sorry, but I don't believe that. No, a horrible liar. Horrible liar. Um, so three-finger pinch, nutmeg, and you can put a little pepper. Good amount of pepper, all right? Then what we're going to do, I like to add, Italian cheeses to it, grated cheese, grana padano, parmigiano, pecorino, depend the strength of the flavor that you want to have. The cheese itself, either of the three cheeses is fine, they're not going to alter the texture of the gnocchi, but the flavor will change between grana and pecorino, all right? One is sharp and dry, the other one is more mellow. I like grana for myself because it's the more mellow out of the three, out of the three, and I wanna, I don't want a too strong gnocchi. Now we're gonna add some cheese to it, and I'm gonna add a little bit of flour. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lock this down, and we're gonna mix this ingredient for 30 seconds. Whoo! I got it. I got this. I got it. All right, that's it. Did I say 30 seconds? No, 30 seconds. Mix it for five seconds, whatever. Just mix it two or three times, done. Then here's what you're gonna do. God damn you. All right, tough. All right, then we're gonna get the potato and we're gonna add uh, by visual, right? As much potato as there is cheese and flour. And we're gonna swirl a little bit longer. In this way, what we're doing, what is happening right now is that we are creating movement. We're mixing flour and we're mixing cheese with the potatoes. Potatoes are cold. So the moisture is not gonna release in a form of steam. But what this is gonna happen is gonna wet the flour and the cheese enough uh, to almost get him to the same consistency of the potatoes. Now, if you look at this, go inside, stick it up in there. This is very grainy still. You can't play with it, it's not like a Play-Doh yet. But this is needed because in this way, the dry ingredients are absorbing partial moist fr moisture from the potato, all right? So here's what we do now. 
Stop it, lift it, and we're gonna add the more potato to it. And here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna let it go until these start to look like a dough. Now, all the representative from Maine, they will follow up with you guys if you ask. We can send you an actual recipe. I hate recipes. So what we're gonna give you is not an actual recipe, our guideline. Because we can tell you ballpark how much you're gonna need, but I don't know how much moisture there is in your potatoes because the chance that you use the same potatoes I did with the same oven at the same temperature for the same time, there's slim to none. So what we're trying to do here is not teaching you a recipe, it's broadcasting common sense, which is really what's needed in the hospitality industry. You can find recipe everywhere. You don't need me for a gnocchi recipe. You Google it, boom, done, there. But common sense, you can't Google that. The understanding of how things operate together, that's what makes successful, successful maneuver. Make sense? All right, so here's what we do now. We're gonna let this mix. This is gonna mix for a couple of minutes, and you can see that right now, right? It's very grainy, it's not a dough yet. Let it go. You gotta be patient. Patient is not one of my virtue. It really isn't. All right? So, you got to let that mix. And the reason why I've added the, the dry ingredient first is because if you add the potato first and then you add the dry ingredient, what about you run out of potatoes already? What about if you need more? What are you going to do, add water? No. You're going to add eggs? We don't need to. Add your dry ingredient first, and then if you have a little potatoes left over, eat it. Do some mashed potato with it. I don't know, whatever you want. But I'd rather have a little bit of potato left over than no potato, and now what the hell am I gonna put in there? What am I adding, eggs? I don't need that. What am I adding, water? No, we try to take it out by cooling the potato down. Make sense? Adding dry ingredient first, it's the only way to do a super, super light gnocchi. If the gnocchi is gummy, make sense? That's not the way we do it in Italy, all right? So check this out. This is getting together. You see that? It's not as grainy anymore. You see that? All right. It's getting there. Now what I need to do is just kick it up a notch. I need movement. So the airs bubble between the potatoes and the dough and everything that will start to smash. All right. We're going to be a minute like this, and then we're, we're pretty much done. Nothing on the table. It's very easy procedure. I do thousands of pounds of gnocchi every week. Thousands. And what we do, we make in a big ober. And there is no mess. And then we get the dough, we roll it, gnocchi, frozen, done. Once you shape them, not the dough, but once you shape them, freeze them in a sheet tray. And once they're frozen, take them out, bang the sheet tray on your table collect the gnocchi and put them in Ziploc bag. They'll last forever. There is no eggs inside, just potatoes and cheese. You can freeze them for a year. Now, why would you? I don't know, because I can knowing that there is gnocchi in my freezer and I'm eating something else. But if you are a restaurant, that's what you can do. So check this out. You see the dough now? You see that, right? So here's what the deal is now. It's wet, but it doesn't stick to your hand. See that? High five. Look at that. See? It doesn't stick to your hand. It's not hot. It's easier to maneuver. You don't have to do it fast. Who cares? So here's what we do now. 
A little flour. You don't need a lot of flour. You just a little flour to your hand. Go like this. Get one of that. Cut it in half. Then you got to press it because if there is air bubble, you got to get rid of them. Then you go like this. And you keep pressing them. Then you go like this. Now, see, if you don't press them enough, look what happened. You see that? You see that breaks? See that? Because I didn't press it enough. And there is still air bubbles inside. So what you can do, you can go back down. You can go back down and mix a few more minutes. All right, so I'm doing this now. Look, now I smashed it. I press it really well. And this doesn't break anymore. Look at that, beautiful. Now we're here. And here's what we're going to do now. Cut this in half. Come right here. Got it? Where you go? All right. Thank you. Go right there. All right, and you go like this, right? Then what you do? I like my gnocchi round. Round dish. Not round, but round dish. So I get some flour here. Put them in a bowl. Saute them a little bit. At my restaurant, we got big ass bowl. We do like a lot of them, right? And you round the edges like that. Look at that. Boom. Perfect gnocchi. Now, if you're a home cook and you want to look good to your wife, fantastic. Get a fork or get a little thing and, and score 2,000 gnocchi each one of them. I got a life. I can't do that. All right? We cannot do that. But this is the way. Some people, they squeeze them and they press them in half. What would you do there? Why would you want to waste your time when it doesn't improve anything but a little bit of the look? Seriously. I was working with these. Um, I, I still work. I have. I, I still work with them on all, all stuff. But I work on pasta production. And uh, by getting rid of the ridges, unless you have a machine. If you have a machine, whatever, it's a machine doing it. But gnocchi made with a machine, they're going to be 10 times harder than these because there is got to be a certain resistance for a machine to do gnocchi. So gnocchi made with a machine, they will never come close to the gnocchi that you can make by hand which is only the only things we serve in my restaurant. Gnocchi made by hand. We mix the dough with the machine, but we shape them by hand because I don't want to deprive you of the perfect experience. So I was working with this company, and they said, Fabio, how, how can we save some money? They do gnocchi by hand, thousands and thousands of pounds, right? And I said, get rid of the ridges. And he was like, no. No, I can't get rid of the ridges. My customer loves it. And I'm like, dude, your customer don't give a crap about it. Get rid of the ridges. It's half the labor. You got to touch every single one of them. You're making thousands of pounds. Are you crazy? I will shoot myself after the day I work. I'll be going home. I'm going to make ridges with the dog. What are you going to? I mean, seriously. You can't, <laughs> you can't do it. Right? You can't do it. You just can't do it. And this guy was like, oh, no, I'm not sure. I don't know, man. And this guy has thousands of customers that buy our gnocchi all over. He got three emails saying, why you got rid of the ridges? And this guy said, saving half the labor and they're charging you 10% less for the gnocchi. All right. Nobody. <laughs> you are the only one that creates problem in your head before the actual problem really exists. That's, that's a smaller business. Normal. It's entrepreneurship. You're the, you are the reason of 80% of the problem that didn't happen to you yet that might probably will happen because you're afraid to take a chance. 
So now we're all happy we have perfect gnocchi. So here's what we do. Gnocchi is very easy because it's quick to make, it looks delicious, and it's perfect. It's like a little perfect bite. So you boil them, salted water. Before, when you freeze them, freeze them now, here, right? Freeze them and then bag them. And what you do, once you have to cook them, even for your restaurant, we have in my restaurant, we portion them. So we do five ounces portion, and we have a little little stacked container of five ounces in the freezer underneath the pasta station, and we just drop them in water from frozen. You don't want to let them chill because they're going to get gooey, all right? So we're going to boil them. How you doing, man? You good? All right, all right. So then I have a little bit of sauce, a little tomato sauce, good amount of olive oil, good amount of pepper, and some cheese. So you will see here, go, go up in there, you will see the gnocchi boils and they, and they start to float. You see that? Let me tell you the very truth about fresh pasta. When fresh pasta floats, it's, it's an inch away from being overcooked. The moment that you see the first few like these float, take them all out. All of them. They're going to keep cooking in the pan, and we love for them to cook in the sauce. No, I'll use this. It'll just take me a little long. It's fine. See, they're floating. Look how beautiful they are. So now here's what I would love to do. I don't even know if I can do it, but honestly, I will. Because I didn't got the memo not to. So who wants to try one or two? All right, perfect. So here's what we're going to do. All right. I'm glad that they didn't wear white. All right. Do you have a little fork or something? Where? Right here? All right, beautiful. So here's what we're going to do. Oh. It's like angel talking to you from heaven. Who likes gnocchi? Holy shit, I don't have that many. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Be nice. Come on. Come on and pass them around. Go for it. Come here. Come on. Can't get gnocchi from sitting down. Get two of them. So here's what you're going to do. Before you try them, just remember what I said. Gnocchi has to be light and fluffy, not chewy and gummy. And anyone that says that there is a better gnocchi out there, send them to France. All right. Careful, because it's a tomato gnocchi. I'm not going to pay your laundry bill. So don't grab them like it's a King Excalibur's war, like that. All right? We're running out of fork. You're running out of luck. Ladies first. Come on, man. There you go. Good man. And you know what? You get two because you're good man. There you go. Ladies first, always. All right. Go for it. Thank you, sir. Chef. Sir. If you ever want to do a licensing with mains for my gnocchi, we'll talk about it, right? I got you guys a good deal. You're welcome. Check that out. All right. And maybe some chef, maybe somebody's going to be like, yeah, they're too soft. They're going to smoosh in the pan. They shouldn't be in the pan. You should have a little sauce on the side, saute them once or twice and send them out. Why do you want to sit on your saute pan for an hour? Toss them in the sauce, out. This is the lightest gnocchi you ever had. Bottom none. Who wants some more? Chef, get another one. Get some more. Come on, guys. 
Go for it. And look, seriously, you can adjust a little bit the, the texture if you want. All you got to do is to add a little bit more flour. But unless you make a cold preparation, these cannot be achieved. Go for it. Yeah, she got one. Ladies first. Good man. Good man. I was just making sure you pay attention. All right. Light as gnocchi. Boom. You're welcome. All right. You got two more? Yes, of course. Take all of them. It's fine. There's nobody here anyway. All right. How'd you like him? Good, right? How'd you guys like him? It's very different, right? All right, but it's very light. And this is the, the you got to, I love when people come to my restaurant. I'm not a big fan of gnocchi. They're, they're hard. They're chewy. What? What are you talking about? I don't like him. Mike, come on. Get over here. <laughs> Try it. Boom. And they're hooked. All right. So here's, this is easy. We can do more. Take this home. Make them tonight. Whatever you want to do, man. Um, so here's the best part. What I love to do. We have, who's going to be tonight? We have a nice talk tonight. Who's going to be tonight? Well, we're going to have fun tonight. We're keeping it quiet now, but tonight is going to be nice. Come with earmuffs. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. Um, let's do some Q&A. I know you guys have some questions. We got great question yesterday about food, about business, about whatever you guys like. We got a question. Oh, there's a question up here. Is there a potato that you prefer? Is there a potato Type of potato? But I have the feeling it's going to come right back. Oh, yeah. Got it? Is there a potato I prefer? Big, cheap potatoes. Somebody, I see, oh, I only use russet potato for my gnocchi. I use baby fingerling. <laughs> it's great. If you got that much money to waste, I got ideas for you, and I may even get your money back. You know, that's amazing. Use the biggest, cheapest, dirtiest potato. You know when you go, you go to a grocery store and you find a bag of potato, they are in a plastic bag under the counter, all dirty, and America doesn't want them because they don't want to wash them. They want the baby... Baby, baby oil, like potato, already washed, ready to eat. And I'm like, get the cheapest, dirtiest, biggest potato you can get. That's all you need. Is, Italian food is meant to be deliciously cheap. You can't spend a lot of money for the potato. You want to spend your money, spend your money on a good steak. Spend your money on a good lobster. Spend your money on truffle and caviar. Don't waste your money with freaking potatoes. All right? Next question, please. Come on. Give me some. Think about it. After him, uh, one more question. Come on, guys. So do you have to use the, um, fr uh, take them fresh out of the thing or let the baked potato cool, then peel them, then mince them up like that? I'm sorry. Say th I'm sorry. <coughs> Your question was a little bit confusing. I apologize. No, I'm confused too sometimes. No, no, no. no. Oh, if you're confused, I can't do much. I mean, too. <laughs> I fix me or I don't fix mine yet. So I our baked potatoes, um, we have extras at the end of the night sometimes. Yes. Um, leave them cool and then do a yeah. peel it or just you, you have to you, do them hot? You didn't see the whole thing, did you? No. All okay. right, that's why. So when you have a baked potato, pass it through a ricer or through a cooling rack, whatever. You got you to gotta do this. They got to look like this, right? It doesn't matter. Just pass it through it. But then you got to let them rest at least overnight because when you work them, they're going to be really cold. All right? They're going to be really cold. And then you do the gnocchi. Easy. Boom. Yeah. Sometime I do gnocchi with leftover mashed potatoes. But leftover mashed potato, you got to spread them on a cooling rack, on a, on a, um, on a sheet pan, put them in the fridge, uncover and they gotta sit there for three days because they gotta really get dry goes to the mashed potato you normally add some cheese some butter so it's a stretch but hey i've saved restaurants a lot of money in telling them how to utilize kitchen scraps and leftover because they were throwing away batches of mashed potato every night you crazy make croquette make souffle do something with it you're throwing your money in the garbage 
Question, some other question, come on. Come on, guys, you don't have any questions. Seriously, people. Uh, Fabio, what's your uh, definition of hospitality? My definition of hospitality is just make sure that you say yes whenever you can say yes and just put your ego aside because otherwise you're going to be your only customer. Meaning, if somebody wants to come to your restaurant and they want chicken in their seafood linguine, why do you throw a big fee? Just charge them 20 bucks for it and give it to them. Do you have chicken? Great. Just give it to them. No, I don't do substitution. And you're an idiot. I'm sorry. My food is meant to be eaten this way. Then have at it. Go ahead. Enjoy. Bon appetit. I'm going to the next door restaurant. Hospitality means your door is open for any request if you can legitimately satisfy them. I'm not saying that on a Saturday night you got to go to a grocery store and buy broccolini because the person asks you for broccolini instead of spinach. But if you can do it and you don't want to do it just because you got an ego, then you're an idiot and you, and you deserve to fail. And I'm sorry if that few uh, guys, some of you falls into that category, but the restaurant business is too big and there is too many players to not have a reason to satisfy your customer anytime you can. And I have an ego. I like my steak rare, like mooing. And why would you put seafood linguine and parmesan on it? Are you crazy? If you are crazy, I'll keep it for myself and I'll charge you for it. You're paying my bill anyway. Who cares? You want to eat, I'm not going to say what, but if you want to eat something that I find disgusting, but I can do it for you, yes, fine. No, I'm okay with it. I got 11 restaurants, 3 million customers every year. Do you think everybody eats the way I like it? No. They love fettuccine Alfredo. Get it. I don't have them on my menu. Can you make fettuccine Alfredo? Sure. 20 bucks. Love it. Oh, 20 bucks, 14.95, or whatever. But I make fettuccine Alfredo with eight cheese. So it's, you know, you know, it, it, the hospitality, man, it's the word itself. You got to be hospitable. You're a servant for your guest. Doesn't matter how big of a chef you are. Doesn't matter how many Michelin star you have. I work with the biggest chef in the world, and they, ne they would never say no to somebody that come in the restaurant and for some reason would love to enjoy their food without some of the component. Who am I to deny you an experience? And some chefs do. No substitution. Saturday night, we're too busy to change our way to make you happy. Guess what? Next Saturday, you won't be as busy because I'm not going to be here. Guys, I've seen it countless times over. And the bigger the chef gets, the bigger the ego gets. Go ask permission to the chef. What? Are you crazy? I get pissed if one of my servers come to the kitchen and ask me permission to do a spaghetti meatball add calamari. Did I 86 calamari? No. I have them in the restaurant. You want calamari? I get a bag of you. Take it home. I don't care. Make sense? What you got to ask me is if you're not sure that I can physically make it or not. Like, hey, do we have zucchini flour in December? Let me ask the chef. Chef, do we have zucchini flour? Yes, of course. Can I have a fried zucchini flour? Not really, because we already have chopped them to put them on the pizza. So I can't fry it, a bunch of chopped zucchini flour. It's going to look like shit on the plate. The customer come back and say, he wants zucchini flour chopped. Fantastic. I go to the customer, and I'm like, I'll do whatever you ask me. But you understand that because of the way we use our zucchini flour, they're all chopped. So you're going to get chopped zucchini flour. I don't suggest it, but hey, if you want to try it, it's your money. I got a fryer, I got tempura, and I got chopped zucchini. I'm, over, I'm okay with it. And trust me, I wasn't always this way. I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. Customer once ordered something. I don't even remember what it was because I erased it from my mind. And I said, no, that's, that's, that, I'm not going to do it. Not my own restaurant, right? Because if you say no to somebody and you're getting a paycheck, you're twice a moron. First of all, because you shouldn't be saying no to anybody. Second of all, because you're saying no with somebody else's money. If you want to lose, lose your money at least. Make sense? Not you. I'm just giving you a general idea. 
So I, this customer come over. I was like 19 years old. Got my first restaurant going. I was a big shot. This guy come over. He asked me for something. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to do it. No. Nope. Server goes like, he's actually a very nice customer. I'm like, I don't care. It's my food. It's my food. I'm not going to do it. Server go back. I have no choice. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Server go back. Customer comes to the table and says, you know what? We always enjoy coming here. Tonight was the last time. Pay your bill with your ego, dick. That's what he said. And he walked away. And I was like, I didn't sleep for a week. But you guys still called me a dick. And he said, and he was right. I was a dick. I was being a dick. I called the customer back. I said, well, you're right. I'm sorry, man. I'll do whatever you want. I apologize. I understand. But I'm saying somebody doesn't call you out. You think you're the sh you're the man, you know? I do whatever I want. I'm the chef. That's great, cause you're gonna be the only one paying your bill at the end of the day if you do too much what you want. That's just the way I think. And for me, we serve over three million people every year. Turn out to be a very good policy. Policy, make customer happy. It doesn't cost you anything. It's easier to say yes than say no and have to justify, explain why. Look like I did. No, just do it. Fair enough. That's a hospitality, man. Try to please them. Any other question, guys? Come on. Yes. On that note, what... Say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, on that note, what has been your biggest mistake in your restaurant Ego. career? Ego and being stubborn. What I want to believe that some of you... I consider myself a still a small operator. My business is fairly sizable, but my income doesn't pass a hundred million dollar with my business. We're getting there, but we're not there. So I'm not a big corporation. My biggest mistake is that many small operator, they think they got all the answer. And that was me a while ago when I was struggling with my three restaurants. I knew everything. I was never wrong. I paid the bill. I do whatever I want. I was in love with my idea, and I was driving with emotion. It's good to be emotional about your business, but you got to drive with common sense and business acumen, not with your heart. Never happened, right? But you know those people that go like, oh, no, I can't change my menu because uh, my sister loves that dish. No, uh, Mr. Mario comes twice a week, and he always ordered that. He was going to be so upset if we take it off the menu. And this food is like a dog. Nobody wants it. Only Mario likes it. Guys, think about it. I change my menu quarterly. But I don't change my menu quarterly. I change the 30 40% of my menu that doesn't work quarterly. In restaurant, it's either you increase the sale or you reduce expenses. If you buy stuff that doesn't sell, it doesn't work. You get rid of it, you throw it away, or you're not serving fresh stuff. Who does that? So the reality is that 30% of your menu today make up for 80% of your sale. Get yourself a POS system, start to run some report. So I'm so sorry, Uncle Mario, if your chicken and mushroom has to get out of the menu. Because it's not selling, I'm not making money with it, and I got to order mushroom and I'm throwing them away every week. That's the biggest mistake. People are too stubborn to make the changes that they need to be done for allow growth to happen. It's not the economy. People have money. They don't have money anymore like they used to to be able to go out five nights a week and not give a crap about it. But those two nights, they have the choice to come to you or to go to somebody else. My restaurant, in the past five, six years, every year, 20, 30% grow on the year prior through the crappy economy we had. I didn't feel it. I'm killing it, but not because I'm, I'm special or something. I'm a normal guy. I got two, uh, two legs, put my pants in the same way that you guys do in the morning. I didn't even speak English. My English suck. So seriously, I'm not that special, trust me. But I got it. I really got it. What I think, it doesn't matter. All it matters is the bottom line, numbers. Are you succeeding or are you paying for a have, to have a hobby? 
that's a mistake that everybody makes. Everybody thinks they got all the answer, and they're too cocky, stubborn, and, and they don't listen. I got three restaurants. I know what I'm doing. Now you don't because somebody has 20. Unless you want to have three restaurants, unless you have 30% bottom line, a 50% legal sale, then you can't tell that you know what you're doing. Because somebody's doing those numbers. Make sense? And I don't know everything. I really don't. But I can teach somebody that has one restaurant, and I can learn from people I'm working with that they are running 100 restaurants. One of my good friends just went public with his company, Danny Mayer. He made $380 million in a day. If I don't spend a dime, if I don't spend a dime from tomorrow, if I don't pay employee, I don't pay anybody, my company will take 10 years to make that. So he's doing something. I don't know how. What am I going to go to Danny Mayer and say, nah, dude, you crazy? You put ground chuck in your burger? My burger is better. It's going to be like, yeah, it might be your burger is better. Your business sucks. You got two restaurants. I got 300. I just made 300 million out of it. I'd agree with that. <laughs> he can't. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's about a system. And uh, sorry. And people don't get that. People that cut up too much in what they believe is right, that they don't see the path. The path is there. You're not the first one, dude. Many people have one restaurant. Some people have two, less people have three, few people have five or six, less people have more than 10. Only 0.1% of the restaurateurs out there have more than 25 operations. There is one Danny Mayer in America. He ain't special. He's a great guy, great businessman. I said yesterday, I'll say it again today. If you're the smartest person in your business, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> I want to learn from who has 50 restaurants, not tell, you know, it does, I don't know. It, it, I'm very passionate about it, so I, I used to end up yelling at people when they, when they hire me because they hire me, they pay me a lot of money to go there and listen to their excuses. Why would you want to give me like five, ten grand a day to come here and listen to your insanity? What are you saying has it been working to get you where you want to be? No, but I think it's the right way. And then you're crazy, man. That's your check back. I'm out of here. I got other stuff to do. <laughs> Makes sense? That, but that's 90% of the people I work with. I love it. And then eventually they get it, you know. But result is a little bit. You, gotta, you can't go from one restaurant to five. You got to go from one restaurant to one restaurant that works efficiently to one restaurant that works efficiently and makes you money to one restaurant that works efficiently, makes you money, and now it's scalable to one restaurant that works efficiently, makes you money, and now it's scalable to your second operation, and your second operation is not going to work as good as the first. Then when you can do that, then you can expand. But it's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of people listening, and people don't like to listen. They know it all. They see me, they go like, this guy doesn't speak English. It's 37. I'm 60 years old. I've been in business for 30 years. And you got one restaurant, dude. What do you want me to do? You're happy. Why am I here? God bless you. You have done more than many people out there because you're, you're your own business. That's amazing. Congratulations. But why are we talking? Any other question, guys? Yes, ma'am, over there. And, I mean, I don't mean to offend anybody. It's just a point of view, right? Because I went through the same things. So I love when people tell me that I'm doing it wrong because they might, they might right. They might are right. Yes, ma'am. Where did you get your love of cooking? Who influenced you the most? Say that again. Where did you get your love of cooking? Who influenced you the most? Um, I, I honestly, I had to go to work. Um, my grandmother was on a wheelchair, so she couldn't even reach the stove to cook. I grew up with food stamp, so my meal, most of the time, there were eggs from the chicken coop and water and flour made pasta with tap water. When I was 11 years old, my mom got really sick, and we need money for Medicare. So I went to work, and I was baking pies in a pastry shop from midnight to 7 in the morning, every night. I was 11. Then at 7 o'clock, I was getting my backpack and go to school. Sleep through the morning. School, I did horrible. I wasn't very good with rules and regulations. School, plus I had to wear the stupid blue little outfit. I hated it. 
I hated it. And, uh, and then when I was 14, I went to work for a guy during the day. And I was working from 1, the school was over, till midnight 1 every day. I've done it for five years. And the guy said to me one day, sat me down and said, why you work so hard? And I told him, I said, because I suck at school. I hate it there. I hate everybody. I don't like people generally. That was back then. Now I love people. So in the kitchen, for me, it was perfect because they're all lunatic. They're all like half of them, <laughs> they're alcoholic. And, and it's like, like I was fitting in. I was like, they're all weird people in the kitchen when I used to work. It was perfect for me. So and the, this guy said, do you understand you work like 130 hours a week, man? You work really hard. And I said, yes, I know. And he said, would you like to be my business partner? And I'm like, no, dude, I'm, I'm 19 years old. Are you crazy? All I know is to come, show up in the kitchen, and do whatever I need to do. And he said, but that's a good mentality. You got to do whatever you need to do. And I said, sure, let's get a restaurant going. I love it. Woo I'm a restaurant owner. I left the restaurant. I got a big head like this already. I was like, gosh, I'm a restaurant owner. Woo. Yeah, this guy gave me like, I don't know, 5% of his business. I don't even remember. It wasn't even a contract. It was a handshake. In Italy 25 years ago, who cares? I went to buy myself a motorcycle with the money I didn't make already. Bought myself a big motorcycle. Then now I'm an owner. The guy has a 19-year-old business partner. Now he's never to be seen in a restaurant. I'm running the whole things. In seven months, we lost over half a million then. I was losing money left and right. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm 19, dude. You're an idiot. Why would you want me as a business partner when I'm 19? It's your fault, man, not mine. I'm 19. What do you want from me? And then we fix it. We close the restaurant down. We, we took down everything we did wrong, mostly me, because this guy was never there. So besides never be there, I couldn't really blame him for anything. He's never there, right? And then I, I, I was working. That's how I learned. And although I haven't mastered the recipe for success, I know exactly what the recipe for disaster look like. We pay all the debt, and then when I left, uh, took about a year and a half, and then when I left Italy, I had a bunch of restaurants there. We had a hotel. We had a farmhouse, bed and breakfast. We did very well. Sold everything. I bought myself a house in Italy. I bought my mom and my dad a house. I bought a few other things. And I moved to the United States with a little bit of money, not enough to open a restaurant, whatever, because I didn't even speak English. So I moved to the United States in 2006, and I took a line cook job for, then it was like nine bucks an hour, so I could learn English. Because I, I didn't spoke a word of English in 2006. And sure enough, after two years of trying to learn, I learned Spanish. I was fluent. And I was like, shit, <laughs> that's not cool. Like, what, I, what the hell am I doing now? Great, now I know Spanish. Hola, vamonos. Mostly bad words. And then I was like, damn it. And then what I, and then what I did, I'm like, in the kitchen in America, there is no way you're going to learn English. The chef doesn't give a crap. All the Spanish guys I work with, we go play soccer and drink beer, so they're not teaching me English. What it is what it is. So what I start to do, which it turned out salvation, I start to read the business book. Business review, because I said, I need proper English. I'm not going to get proper English from a movie. I got no time to watch TV. So when I was at work, I was reading business review. And that, and that helped a lot. I go like, I, these people are very successful. How they do it? And I'm like, dude, this guy looks like me. Not, not like me, but seems like a normal guy. He just has a different mindset. And I start to translate that in Italian. And I've read over a 1,000 books in the last seven years. And when I did that, I, I got it. And I said, what about if I apply a little bit of what I'm learning to my business? And that worked. I opened the first restaurant, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we'll have more by the end of the year. We have a few more next year planned already. But we're consolidating now. And, and what I actually started to do about six years ago, five years ago actually, which it turned out really good for me as a learning curve and very rewarding from a financial standpoint, I help a lot of small business to get out of the funk. I'm doing all right. My restaurant makes 10% profit. Ah, really. That's 
average national statistic, but that's because restaurant business in America suck. 90% of the restaurant that opens every year close before the first three years of operation. And that's because due to bad management. Because you got a million dollars saved from your previous job, uh, home equity, 401k that you take out because you have a dream and your mom has a great lasagna recipe. Now all of a sudden you open a restaurant and you lose everything you ever saved in your life. Some of them we save, some of them they're too far deep in the hole that we can't do anything for them. But it's good because I get to meet a lot of people and it makes me grow as a business person too because you have no idea what kind of situation I get myself into. It. You think that the more you grow, the more you get wealthy in business, the more your business thrives, the less problem you have. You're wrong. You always going to have problem. You just get better quality one. So that's a blessing, but I really didn't I wish I could say I learned how to cook from my grandmother or my mom. They were too busy working to make a living. I was eating fried eggs every day. Seriously, I didn't have a steak till I was later on in my life. I didn't have a bed till I was 11. There was no rooms in my house for a bed. I was sleeping in a recliner. So it kind of sucked. I wish I had a better story for you, but, but I have killer recipes for eggs. I mean, I make amazing eggs. All right, we're good. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you all tonight. Thank you, guys.